Yeah, you can say that. I'm one of the best fighters in the world, yes. That's why I, I tell people all the time, if you have a dream, how bad do you want it? You know, how bad? It's just the question, how bad do you want it? <laughs> There's a simple question you have to ask yourself, how bad do you want it? To train and focus on the training and focus on the fight, that's it. For the guy that's above me, you know, I'm the guy that is above. The immortal is also mindset, you know, it's... You have to think that you are unbeatable. If you're gonna give everything, or you're gonna say, no, today not, then you don't really want it, you know. If you say, you're gonna say like, no, today I don't want it because I don't feel like it, you know. Then you don't really want it because, you know, positive energy, that's, that's my mindset. And I, I'm the underdog like for my whole professional career. So I'm used to it, you know, the pressure is not on me, it's on him. If you do it today, maybe tomorrow you get the opportunity or maybe the next day, the next week, that you're on beat and if you keep that mindset, you will become a stronger person, I think. You know, you have to keep believing in that dream, and if you do that, yeah, you, one day you reach, or not, but you, you, you can say you tried. You know, for me, a fight is a fight. Everybody around it, they are gone when we are inside the ring, so. My name is Regan Erso. I'm 30 years old, I'm from Suriname. I live in the Netherlands and that's me. Yeah, the change from Suriname to the Netherlands was like, uh, you could say I was like a little depressed for me as a child. Uh, you go from, from hot weather, a nice food, your own people to a country with very cold weather, different food and different people. And uh, in the beginning, I threw up uh, very often because my body couldn't take the food. Uh, the Dutch food and yeah, I, I, when I go, I used to play outside, you know, in Suriname and uh, I start playing outside in the Netherlands, but it was, my body was not used to the cold, you know, so it was, it was <laughs> a hard time for me as a child. I think so, it, I think it, it was like the beginning of, 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 of uh, me uh, getting used to hard times, you know, and, and um, um, how do you say that? Um, like de development to, 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 to the environment, you know, and yeah, I think so, it, it helped me a lot, I think. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, yeah, I, wa I walk in on the street, I came from school, four guys assault me and uh, yeah, I fight back, of course, but yeah, four against one was not, yeah, you know, you know, and I, I get punched also and I came home, I told my parents, of course, my dad, go, go outside, you're looking for the guys with me, you know, like, but we didn't find them. But then he said like, okay, uh, maybe it's better if you go on, on, on a uh, uh, martial arts sport, you know, to, so you can defend yourself. And no, for me it was the other, other uh, how do you say, the other, other side of, the, <laughs> of that feeling for me it was like, because when they run away, because they, I get punched, but I, it, while I get punched, I saw the guys clearly, you know, like uh, the feeling that I was getting mad and more mad, more mad, you know, and, and the moment they start running away, I was getting up and I was like, ah, oh, man, I want to punch these guys so bad, you know, and also when my dad, uh, I told my dad, you know, when I came home and he started, yeah, you know, come, we go outside, we take the car, we go look for the guys. <laughs> and at the moment I was also angry, like, yeah, I'll be find them, you know, we're going to punch them, but we didn't find them, but yeah, you know, yeah, it is what it is. You need to find ways to be more comfortable in the street and to like avoid that kind of situations, you know, because they were triggering me in the street, you know, uh, throwing pencil at me and I was like, hey, what you doing, you know, and you know, when, when you're in that kind of situations, better don't say nothing, just walk, walk away, you know, and I'm, I'm that guy, uh, used to be that guy that go like, what you doing, man, well, you know, what's up, <laughs> and you know, four against one, yeah, it's not gonna work, you know, so. Yes, it, it's now been like 15 years uh, that I'm here at Cicciato, and for now it's, it's, it's just a family, you know, my trainers are my, like, you could say my second dad, and you know, you're building the bond, in the years, um, you know, you have the special connection because yeah, I'm going to fight, but I'm not going to fight alone. Of course, they are supporting me. They are in the whole training camp with me. They see my pain, they see my suffering, they see my sweat, they see my blood, they see everything. You know, so it's a special connection, and yeah, it's 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 like a second family. 
I was, I was angry, yes. Uh, yeah, aggressive, you could say aggressive. Yes. And then did you come to um, Sichuan Yes. With that kind of mentality? I come with that kind of mentality to Sichuan yes. And my trainer just started laughing at me because uh, I come inside the gym, I said, hey, I want to fight, you know, <laughs> just like that. And he, st he started laughing at me and said, listen, <laughs> you come here every training for, seven, it's for six months, then you, we can give you a fight. So I did, and my, uh, like, uh, my, uh, my level of aggressive, aggression uh, in the street became like less less because of the training in the gym, of course. I could lose my aggression here in the gym. And yeah, I, I, I became like a quiet, not a quiet boy, but you know, easy, easy going guy. And seven months later, I had my first fight. Being an underdog, does it piss you off or does it make you better? No, it makes me better. It pissed me off also, but I don't care, you know. You know, for me, a fight is a fight. Everybody around it, they are gone when we are inside the ring, so. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're not going to help him, you know. So, and I, I'm the only dog like for my whole professional career. So I'm used to it, you know, the pressure is not on me, it's on him. You can't be the underdog anymore after the last seven years you've had, but do you still think you I, ju I, ju I just, I feel, I feel always that I'm the only dog. You know, because I don't, I, I don't fight uh, in my hometown, hometown or my my country, you know, I always fly to another country to fight there. So I, it it doesn't feel like like uh, uh, how do you say it? like like I have the whole crowd with me, you know. That advantage. Yes, exactly. But yeah, it's it started li like for like a co coincidence because here in the Netherlands at my time, when when I started in the professionals. Uh, you have to, you have to, to earn money. You have to uh, bring people in, you know, like selling tables or selling tickets. And I was just like a normal boy from the neighborhood. I don't know people that want to pay like 200 euros or you know, t for the table or uh, you know. So I was like, okay, I, I just have to find a good manager that can manage uh, uh, fights outside of the country. And I did. I found, I find, found, found a good manager, and he, he said like, okay. Um, I'm going to arrange fights for you uh, overseas, but it's up to you because if you're, if you're not like uh, winning the fights or, or uh, fight good, they're not going to pay you, you know? So it's up to you. If, if you uh, perform good, then the price can be higher, higher, higher. So I was like, okay, let's do it. Fight. You, yeah. I heard you say, because he was a lion champion at the time, yeah. he came out to the fifth and you said, I, I know I've got to knock him out. Did you believe that you had to knock him out in the fifth? Yes. Rules in locker room, want you to be my commands all the time, fix those all the time. If you want to touch gloves, do it now. Good luck to both of you. Regan Ursel, certainly a much larger opponent for Smoking Joe, no matter what. But if Smoking Joe is on form here tonight, well, you are going to see devastation. She's yes, rhythm. because my uh, back at the time, uh, Sergio Wilson, Wilson was in my corner, and he already told me, like, "Listen, if you don't do anything special, now you're gonna lose because he's the champion. You know, and they don't gonna give you the win. Because, yeah, yeah, he's the champion. You fight in America. He's the champion of the organization. So I know I had to do something, and I, I knew in the first round I had it with the high kick, but it became on his chest. So I knew, okay, with the high kick I have to aim higher because his hands were dropping when he, he avoided the punches. And I knew, okay, I just need one moment to throw it, and I just waited, you know. I mean, that's, that's just world class. Oh, he caught it! He caught it! It's he, over! That was a walk away KO with that head kick. He felt it land, knew he hit the sweet spot, and it was done. Wow. Yeah, I just waited. At the left kick, throw this for, for distraction. His head goes to the left side, and I throw the high kick. 
The, fi the fight was tough, yes, but you know what was tougher though is the, was the weight cut. Yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> because the fight was on 72 kilos and I usually fight on 77, 80 kilos. And the funny thing was a week later I had to fight on 80 kilos in China. So like um, I got the fight, f the fight for China first on 80 kilos. So I was gaining weight, you know. I started playing trainers camp, I was eating, you know, just normal. And then suddenly my manager said to me like, hey, you want to fight one week before in America against the champion? I said, yes, of course, why not? He said, okay, but the only thing is it's on 72 kilos. I'm like, fuck, man. So I said, okay, let's go do it, you know, because if I win, I win from a champion, you know, and that's, that's good for my record. So I was like, uh, I was 79 kilos and I had to drop down to 72 in just two weeks. How did you even do that? Yeah, it was crazy. I didn't even know how I did that, but I, <laughs> I did it. And uh, it was hard, the weight cut was hard. And then I fought five rounds, five fucking rounds against a tie. <laughs> uh, and I won the high kick and yeah, I beat the champion. And the next week I fought in China, 80 kilos. And I came there at, at, at my, in the waves with my bread. On 75, I weighed 75 kilos and uh, all the Chinese looking for what are you doing? You know, I was with my bread on the scale, like still eating breakfast. <laughs> and I won that fight also. Is it, so in a basic, it's basically a week? Yeah, one week, yes. Oh. I fought, I think, Smoking Joe, I fought on Saturday. I came back to the Netherlands. I had injury on my left shin. Then uh, I flew Wednesday. I flew to China and I fought that, I fought that Friday. When I became professional, I, I, I start thinking like, okay, we have to use a, a logo, you know, that people are going to recognize me. So then the movie 300 came out. So in the movie, you have the army, the immortals, the Persian army. So I think, okay, this is really cool, you know. So I started using the mask on a t-shirt. Then my, when I started working with my manager, he told me like, why don't you buy the mask and put it on? I'm like... You know, I'm not going to put a mask on for, you know, for what, you know, I don't. <laughs> he said, like, nobody knows you. You're not fighting in, in the Netherlands. You already f uh, uh, you, you fight outside the Netherlands, you know, so nobody knows you. And if you, when you do it, the people going to love it. I'm like, I, first it was in America, then I'm like, nah. Then we were fighting in China. Then he said, like, yeah, nobody knows you. Just do it, you know, just do it one fight, you know. Then I, I bought the mask online. <laughs> I did a wee fight in China, I put it on. I came up, the Chinese people went crazy. Yeah, take the phone out, you know, start filming. I'm like, okay, this works, this works. And yeah, since that fight, I'm, I'm using the mask. Yeah, I think uh, winning the second time from the Kioska. An old Dutch affair. Ricky Russo and the natural Nicky Holtzkin. South America, very small nation to produce some great kickboxers like Remy Van Jasper. Ah! Good inside leg kick from Ricky Russo. Russo wants to get airborne with the knee. And in forward, he looks so dangerous, Russo. He's such a big unit. Overhand right, left took right hand again, a high knee. Here's the combination. Here's the aggression. Jab to the body, up again. Ricky Russo comes forward, there's the jumping knee. And another knee. Just that, with the way he was mixing those weapons. One lightweight kickboxing world champion from the Blue Corner, Ryan Erickson. The immortal Ricky Russell. Because the first time, nobody thought I was win the fight you know and then they said like okay we want to see rematch then we know for sure between 2012 and 2016 went on a terrific 12 match winning streak these guys have got hundreds and hundreds of matches
and he wanted to jump on it immediately. He said he turned it on in the third. He wants to do the same thing that he did in the third. A long time, maybe he's pro kick for 2002. And a big kibosh! The right hand there from Arsenal! Right hand to Hoskin. Jumping knee for the natural! How do you do this? And a big right hand takes it! He might have wobbled him. He might drop it! He might drop it! He might! No! Arsenal doesn't go down! So I had to show the people that I'm the real champion you now and that I'm the real winner of, of, you know, and yeah, so I think that second fight against Nicky. Do you think you got the credit you deserve for that? No. Mm, shame. <laughs> no. Yeah. And still one lightweight kickboxing world champion, Rahian Ersan. of respect between two classy individuals, two outstanding warriors. But then I beat Nicky Hoskin. I came back to the Netherlands. Only one local newspaper interviewed me. Then I beat him the second time. Again, one local newspaper. The biggest test, I think it was, um, it was a time, no, it was a time when I like, I had like, I started my uh, professional career when I was 18 years old. Okay, I, I, I had like seven fights. I won them like KO, 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 KO. It was in the, in the Netherlands. Then um, I couldn't get any fights anymore because they were afraid or the promoter wouldn't pay or, you know, I, I don't bring many people, so no, they only want to pay, like, less money. And I was like, I'm not going to fight for this money, you know. I have a good record, so, you know. So I, I, I had, like, I didn't fight, like, for eight months, nine months. And that's a long time for me, you know. And I didn't have work, so I was only focusing on kickboxing. Uh, I was living by my, myself. So I was struggling, you know, and that was like a very hard time for me. I, I was, I was thinking about quitting with kickboxing and Muay Thai. I was like, yeah, fuck it, why I'm doing this? You know, I almost, almost one year and I, I, I couldn't get a fight. You know, I was working there, you know, black work, you know, like like construction work, uh, cleaning here, cleaning there. And I was like, yeah, okay, I, I need to find something else because you know, and all the time going to the gym, training, 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 training for what? You know, and it was my, my trainers helped me through it because they saw me, you know, like changing, you know, the mood became like down, down. And they say like, you know, keep going, the fights will come, you know, yeah, you are talented, you know, don't stop now because it's, you're going to waste it, you know. So I was like, okay, okay, I, 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 I'm, I'm not going to stop, you know, because just because he said it, you know, otherwise, if he, if he didn't told me, like, don't stop, I, I would quit. You know, I wouldn't be here. Yeah, that's mad, yes, because it, 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 it was also the trust, you know, because I knew I could earn money, but I, I didn't have any fights, you know, and I know he could manage to get something for me, but I didn't know when, you know, and that is, is the trust that you have because I, I, I know from all the times, you know, if he says something, he will do it, you know, so that, that is my trust to him. So I was like, okay, I'm, I'm just going to wait till you manage something. And he said, yeah. He even said that I'll pay your rent for two months. He even did that. Yes, 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 exactly. And you see now where we are. That's why I, I tell people all the time, if you have a dream, how bad do you want it? You know, how bad, it's just the question, how bad do you want it? <laughs> this is a simple question you have to ask yourself, how bad do you want it? If you're gonna give everything, or you're gonna say, no, today not, then you don't really want it, you know? If you say, you're gonna say like, no, today I don't want it because I don't feel like it, you know? Then you don't really want it because, you know? If you do it today, maybe tomorrow you'll get the opportunity, or maybe the next day, the next week, 
you don't know what you know you have to keep believing in the dream and if you do that yeah you one day you reach or not but you you, you can say you tried